Hey, this is Pete from WXAV 88.3 FM in Chicago, and we are honored to have the drummer of the legendary Boston punk rock band, the Dropkick Murphys, Matt Kelly, on the line talking about Riot Fest, which is taking place this weekend here in Chicago. Matt, it is our honor to welcome you to WXAV. Oh, jeez, uh, with an introduction like that, man, uh, the honor's all mine. You kidding me? I'm, I'm, I'm a measly drummer. Don't worry about it. My yeah, pleasure. You're, you're t- too humble, too humble, but thank you for joining us. Like I said, Riot Fest is this weekend, and Dropkick is playing uh, Sunday night at 5.15. What, what can we expect from, from Dropkick this, this Sunday at Riot Fest? Blood, sweat, and tears, man. Uh, anybody who's seen us knows that uh, pretty much not, you know, almost uh, every show is different. Um, We'll probably be writing the set list an hour or two beforehand, like we typically do, make sure we, we're, we're playing something different from the last time we played in Chicago. So it's, it's going to be it's pretty much anyone's guess what we're going to be playing, <laughs> including ours. So <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, a, it's never, never, never canned uh, banter between songs and never, uh, never the same old, same old with us. So not tooting, tooting our own horn here, just saying that we like to keep it interesting for the, for the crowd and for ourselves. And you guys do a great job with it. I've seen you guys live about five times, and each oh. time is unique and it's different and it's it's fantastic. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, that's 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 what I like to see when I see bands. Is you know, you know, you, you, don't, you don't, never know exactly what to expect. You know, yeah, yeah. There's certain things that you do expect, but then, like, I can't believe they played that song. You know, that's, yeah. I, I love having that feeling. So, I think that's yeah, that's that's speaking for for other guys in the band as well. So we write we write a set list like, you know, let's let's try this. You know. I, I, I got to real quick to share this story with you. You guys played House of Blues probably like five or six years ago, and you had the Chicago Police Department's bagpipers come out, and you did your rendition of Amazing Grace, and it was freaking awesome. And it was the last time I ever moshed, because after that, like, what will ever top being able to say you moshed to Amazing Grace with the Chicago Police Department bagpipers <laughs> at a Dropkick Murphy show? That's an amazing story. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, it's all because of you guys so um but yeah this sunday riot fest five o'clock five fifteen. actually don't miss yeah. dropkick murphy's they're going to bring it blood sweat tears and rock and roll now matt you have been with the band almost as long as ken casey has since about 96 97 yeah. and you've seen the band progress you know throughout the years both musically and personnel wise how is the band you know today versus where it was now scary to say almost 20 years ago well i mean we can play our instruments a little better, um, and uh, it's funny because it, it, it's odd because the bands we when we were four piece it was my it was Ken, Rick, Mike, and myself. When we were playing shows back in the beginning, we were playing with bands like the Ducky Boys and the Vigilantes. And 18 years later, Jane from the Ducky Boys and Jeff from the Vigilantes are in our band. <laughs> you know. We've, <laughs> And we toured, you know, we played home, you know, gigs at home with them at the Rathskeller and stuff, and uh, in you know, other small places, and then you know, toured with both bands, and and it's just funny that now, you know, I mean, James has been in the band since about I think 1999 or, or early 2000, and Jeff's been in the band for like six or seven years now. It's, it's crazy. It just shoots by. But um, you know, as far as like you know, personnel wise, we've grown to a seven piece band. You know, we we you know, we went we went from a, a four piece to like a, a dual guitar band, and then we we added bagpipes and we added like you know people who could play things like the mandolin the Mm -hmm. tin whistle and stuff all stuff that were on the first and second records but we could never really duplicate live we we were like you know we wanted to kind of push the boundaries of that stuff and that's how we ended up with a a seven-piece band with full-time guys who would play that you know play that stuff on stage Mm -hmm. so it's yeah it's it's it it, it, i mean musically i think it progressed you know we're, we're you know you're doing it for so long you hopefully you learn to I hate to sound like a you know express yourself better through music you know mm-hmm. you 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 let with through you know we've expanded on all the different styles of 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 that we've 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 played since the beginning you know early songs you had songs that were inspired by bands like Slapshot and, and the FUs and Gang Green like Boston hardcore stuff and then we had yeah. also songs like Far Away Coast which is ballady very Irishy and you know or then you had like kind of like 1982 oi you know British oi inspired like you know like like the Gauntlet a couple of albums later. Yeah, I think we've learned to expand on all those styles in you know, within the parameters of how we sound. So, I think that I guess we've 
progressed in, in those sort of ways over the years. Your latest album, which is fantastic, it's called Signed and Sealed in Blood. You know, it's really, you can see the growth as songwriters for you guys really on this album. What's your approach now for, for how you, you, you write your music? Has it changed over the years as compared to like, let's say, Do or Die? Well, it's actually, oddly enough, a, a lot of songs in Do or Die were kind of, you know, you had a, you had a few songs that we've been playing with playing for a couple of years since the band formed, and then a, a few songs that we literally wrote as we were about to go into the studio. And and then with Sign and Seal and Blood, we t- we kind of took a similar approach. We had been playing a few of those songs, like the song Rose Tattoo, or the song My Hero, or one or two others. We've been playing since the we had been playing those songs out a little bit here and there, and so it's kind of like in the same way of, as it was with Do or Die, where we were just kind of like playing these songs live and they were sort of coming together live and then we throw them down in the studio. And then there were songs that we just literally wrote as we were going into the studio and they just clicked. So bookending six other albums with, with kind of being a bit more meticulous with our writing, th- this last album, Sign and Seal and Blood and Do or Die, took a very similar approach, just like, you know, let's, let's make some big anthemic songs that we'd like to hear. That's awesome. That's awesome that they, they've kind of like, it's come full circle almost then. In a weird way, yeah. yeah. And like, not that we don't want to write big anthemic songs that we want to hear on every album, but it just seemed like after writing so many albums and being so, putting everything under a microscope, like on, on, on going out in style, which was like mm-hmm. a bit of a loose concept album, this was just more like, not free form, but you know, it was more more just kind of by, fly by the seat of our pants kind of thing, and it, and, which is definitely, I guess, harkens back to the, early days of you know do or die and the boys in the docks ep and other stuff like that you know it's, it's, it's an energetic record and we love playing the songs live and they all work live and you guys are really you're a live band i mean when i first got into your band about 12 years ago i was always told see them live you can't capture the energy on on a cd with their live show they're just so much better live I, I think it's actually better to see you guys live sometimes because th- there's just that en- energy and you guys really feed off of the crowd. What is it about live, performing live for, for the band that really gets you guys like moving and, and gets the crowd jumping up and down? Well, I mean, first of all, it's, we're doing what we love and we're doing it as, you know, for lack of a better term, a job. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have the greatest job in the world. We're pretty excited, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, my dad's, my dad's, uh, my dad's going to be 64 this year and he's been a musician you know, for 40 whatever years mm-hmm. and you know, playing in bands is something he's always wanted to do. My brother's a musician who's uh, is becoming more successful, but it's something he's wanted to do. I have rel- other relatives who, you know, they killed me in the position that we're in. It's And I know how lucky we are to be here, and I think everybody in the band knows how lucky we are to be in the position we're in. We've all slogged it out in, in, in you know, small bands and, you know, garage bands and stuff, and it's, 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 it's dear to us that we can go and we can play a show and play songs that we wrote and people go bananas for it. Growing up listening to bands like, like say ACDC and the who and like, uh, you know, the stones and Zeppelin Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and then later on the punk stuff, it's all about the, it's, it's just the best medium to see a band to, with, you know, to, to experience a band is live just how it is music is to be played live a recording a recording came about because people love seeing the band live so much that they wanted to hear it every time it's not vice versa where it sort of has become today is like people want to go see live what they hear in the record it, it's it's kind of flip-flopped completely because you know music is an organic thing it's you know where you know granted people are there's not much playing going on these days as far as you know, you can play a note or fire into a microphone and, the, and, you know, you go in the studio and it, you go through Pro Tools and this and that and it comes out a song. You know, you can auto-tune a, auto-tune a, a gastric air passing and it comes out sounding like <laughs> For us, it's always been very important that the live circuit is, the live experience is the way it is, it's the, what it's about. It's That's how we came up. That's how, you know, bands that we used to go see as kids, that's how we came up. And that's important. We're kind of trying to pass that along to people. It's... Yeah, you selling a million records is awesome, I'm sure. You know, but the fun is 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 in the is is in the the I guess the egalitarian experience of you're coming to see the band, but you're also part of the show too because you know the more involved you are with our show, the better the show is going to be for you and for us. The reciprocity of energy, um, we're giving it everything. The crowd's giving it, giving it everything, and you know at the you know at the end we invite everybody on stage typically. You know, as a show of, you know, we're leveling the playing field. It's not us on some pedestal. You know, we're not Foreigner or Elvis Presley up there. We're just a bunch of jerks who play music, and you're a bunch of people who are there to see us. So it's, it's, a, it's just it's a party. It's a party experience, and that's what we want to convey, and I think that's 
that's what it that's what we do convey. I think I'm going to have a really hard question for you. Right. You mentioned earlier that you're really big into hardcore and you're big into oi. If there's any kid out there listening that wants to get into those scenes, what bands would you recommend you they go and check out? As far as hardcore goes, I mean, you want to start with the early stuff, you know? You got your, uh, your bad brains are probably the greatest. Um, but then, you know, modern, you know, there's modern stuff, at least speaking from a Boston perspective, we have easy pickings. There's bands like the Boston Strangler, who are amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rival Mob, who are uh, another awesome band, a bit more New York-inspired, but also great for the worse. Um, and then there's, you know, there's bands, uh, there's a band called Cream, C-R-E-E-M, as opposed to the, 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 uh, the power trio from the 60s. And there's there's uh, Oblivionation. There's so many good hardcore bands around at this moment, playing real hardcore, not playing whatever watered down heavy metal sounding form is these days. Um, and then as far as Oi goes, geez, there's so many bands. I, I just saw a band in Boston uh, from Paris called Lions Law, amazing. But then you, you want to start with your classics also. Here you have Cockney Rejects, Cox Barrow, the business, early business stuff, um, the Foreskins. Um, and then modern days, I mean, there's there's a million oi bands around the scene, especially in Europe, is huge. You know, over there you have yeah. uh, the East End Battles, you have Evil Conduct, you have uh, Retaliator. It's it's like this. There's such a ubiquity. I'm trying to. <laughs> they're all piled on top of my head here. And yeah, they're just classic. all coming out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's and then if you, if you're not afraid to listen to bands in other languages, there's Common Turn Sect, Camarasi Lens, both from France, who are amazing. You know. Uh, uh, sledgehammer from japan uh it's it's you know there's 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 so much out there and especially with youtube it's so easy now you can just kind of look these bands up and check them out it's so much easier than we when 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 we were kids damn it you know <laughs> yeah yeah and you're, you're absolutely right <laughs> um, a double-edged sword. <laughs> it is it is we're a part of uh, of a network here we're a college radio station here on the south side of chicago and the name of their organization is called college radio day and basically what we try to do is we try to get individuals that don't listen to college radio to tune in and and check us out from your perspective both as a music f- lover and fan and as the drummer of the dropkick murphys what impact has college radio had uh on the music scene and then also on the dropkick murphys i mean first of all in boston we have you know great college radio this wmbr the late risers club they're always playing they're playing the most obscure and cool stuff pretty indicative of, of a, a few stations around here but as far as college radio goes, that, that's how I, I cut my teeth. I, I had a friend who was going to Fitchburg State College in Fitchburg, Mass., and uh, I'd come in with a bunch of records, and we'd spin records. I don't know who was listening, if anybody was listening, but, you know. <laughs> and uh, that same station is also how I actually got into a lot of underground music. Um, some guys who were older than me would have radio shows, like punk radio shows and you know, punk and hardcore, and then other metal radio shows like at night. And, you know, you'd, you'd tune in. You know, you know, hit your tape recorder on record, and you 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 just have these songs by these bands, and you just listen to these tapes. I think it's it's. I think college radio can be a taste maker for for a lot of younger people who are who are just forming their tastes in in music, because a lot of times, you know, most of the time, I hope there's no format on college radio except you know you got to you, know, you have to drop drop a station ID here and, yeah. and a commercial there, but at the same time you can play pretty much whatever whatever you want. So it's it's a lot of times college radio is a reflection of maybe what's happening in the, a local music scene, burgeoning music scene, or underground music scene in, in a given city. And I think that you know either young young people or even older people who are just you know are sick of the typical format of of the of the you know dominating companies who are playing the same junk over and over again. They want to hear something fresh and different and new. They can tune into college radio, and they and you know they'll, they'll hear stuff that they they never even thought. To yeah, hear never of. dreamed of Hungarian yeah. wolf metal or something, you know. Yeah, like because even satellite radio is becoming formatted. You know, where it used to be a pretty cool, like open sort of free for all. Now it's become very restricted and rigid, and you hear the same freaking songs over and over again. So college radio, I think, is very important, and it gets it gets it gets students into you know telecommunications and all that. It's it's a win win thing. I don't know. As far as for the drop kicks, I mean, that's definitely. I, I remember stations around college stations around here would be playing us very early on. Us in bands in the in the, the kind of street punk oi scene in Boston um, back in the mid '90s, you'd have all these bands. They'd be be playing them on radio stations, and you, you that it would it would show because you you play a show with say the Middle East downstairs, there'd be 400 kids for like uh, for a, a, a matinee with all local bands, you know. So and they just you know. 
by word of mouth and by college radio, which is basically word of mouth on steroids, I think you could say, it kind of helps the local music scene in that way. And, you know, bands coming, you know, smaller bands coming through on tour, college radio conveys, first of all, in show information, you know, granted there's, there's the internet these days, but mm -hmm. show information, you're hearing new stuff by these bands, you know, if even if you're not looking for it, which on, on the internet, you you sort of have to look for this thing, look for bands, you know, whereas on the radio, it's given to you. So it's, it's, uh, I think I, I, I think it's super important, um, and it definitely, uh, you know, growing up, it, it was it was it definitely helped shape my my tastes and in, in, you know interests in different music scenes. Well, Matt, thank you so much for your time. Dropkick Murphys this Sunday, Riot Fest 515. You don't want to miss it. They're going to blow your eardrums with some great yeah. Irish punk rock music. Matt, anything in closing you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, well, I'd like to say. Uh, Colin McQuillan, rest in peace, my brother. You'll be missed. And uh, also, if people are interested, uh, we have the Dropkicks of a charity. Uh, it's a charity organization called the Clada Fund, official certified above board. It's done a lot of good things for people. It's uh, C L A D D A G H F U N D, cladafund.org, if you want to check that out on the uh, interwebs. And uh, thanks everybody for listening to my uh, psycho babble. And, uh, Support College Radio. Matt, thank you so much. Again, it's it's cladafund.org. Yes. Awesome. Cladafund.org. Go check it out. Matt Kelly, Dropkick Murphys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a great one.